Hello! Someone waved in the comments. Hi! Hello! <laughs> We're just waiting on some more people to join in and we'll be starting shortly. In the meantime, enjoy the liveliness of the snakes. That's right. They're very active at night, aren't they? They are. We got all kinds of people waving at you guys in the comments. Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> These snakes do not know what kind of weather we're having. If you can hear us, go ahead and put a snake emoji in the comments, please. Please, we can keep talking so you can hear us. <laughs> Let's see. Can everyone hear us? Yes or no? Oh, we got a snake emoji in the comments so oh, people yay. can hear us. Excellent. Awesome. I would put this guy in the comments. <laughs> That's right. That beautiful lavender color. <laughs> All right. So we'll make a few more minutes to have some more people join in. Yeah. In the meantime, try to see if you can figure to out what type of snakes we have. That's right. Or what you notice about them. Size, color, activity. Let's see here. <laughs> Emotions of the snake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll wait about one more minute and then we will start. If you guys want to go ahead and start introducing yourselves. Hi, my name is Sandra Groshvitz. I'm the Animal Programs Coordinator with Monroe County Humane Association, and I am responsible for taking care of our wonderful ambassador animals, including these lovely snakes. And hello, I am Autumn Brunel, and I am the naturalist for Monroe County Parks and Recreation. Um, I'm responsible for a lot of environmental education. I go into schools. Um, I lead a lot of public and community programs. So if you're interested in more after this, be on the lookout for that. Perfect. And then, Sandra, do you want to go ahead and introduce these snakes for us? Absolutely. I'm happy to. This darling is Tangerine. She's 18 years old. She is a corn snake that's been in the MCH family for a really long time. And then Autumn is holding our juvenile snake, Professor Plum. He is a captive bred lavender, and he's about two years old. Perfect. Let me just zoom in on them. And you can see the size difference from two years old to 18 years old. Mm -hmm. Snakes are constantly growing. How big do you think Professor Plum will get? Ooh. I, I could easily see him being the size of Tangerine, if not larger, since he's already a captive species. Mm hmm. And that just means that he was bred to be kind of a pet snake. Perfect. All right. Do you want to go ahead and start for us then? Yeah, absolutely. So we're here talking about snakes, obviously. Um, and we have over 200 of native snake species in Indiana. Um, but here we have two that are pretty commonly found um, in places like Bloomington, where we're at. And they are called corn snakes. Um, they are some of, I love them. They're some of the nicest snakes around. Um, a lot of people think they're called corn snakes just based on where they can be found, which is kind of grassy areas, almost like a cornfield. Um, and another reason is that some people say the underside of their belly looks like a corn cob. Um, so mm -hmm. it kind of looks like corn kernels. Thank you, Professor Plum. Well, um, someone <laughs> asked in the comments, how big are they? Um, if you had to guess, what do you think Let's Professor see. Plum's size is? Professor Plum, I would say is closer to three, three feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And versus tangerines, probably like six, five or six feet. So they can get pretty long. Um, and a snake is actually a special type of reptile um, they have something called a vertebrate, which just means that they have a backbone. So they have a backbone and a spine in here. There are bones. Um, 
Some species of snakes lay eggs, which is pretty cool, and some can give live birth. Um, snake eggs are actually really, really soft. And I'll kind of start by sharing off just a few of my favorite snake facts, and then we'll get into answering some questions that some of us got to ask all week long, which thank you for that. That was very lovely. Um, so snakes can be found often uh, basking on rocks. They actually get their heat from the sun. Um, so if you were to have a pet snake, you would need a heat lamp or some form of light that would give them that heat source so that they can warm up. Um, so you can see them in the daytime basking on rocks. Otherwise, they really like to burrow and hide. So you can find them under logs, under rocks, um, in kind of bushes or leafy areas where they can blend in nicely. Uh, Professor Plum is actually not a, I guess, regular color of corn snake. Um, like we said, he was bred to be a pet. Um, so that means that his colors are a little unnatural. Typically corn snakes, you would see red, black, orange, um, all in one. Um, and we'll talk about tangerine a little bit, but tangerine is actually an albino corn snake. So she's missing a few colors that you normally see. Um, and you don't see these colors in the wild. And that is because it would be so easy for a predator, so someone that wants to eat them, to spot them. Um, unlike one that might be brown and black and orange and white would be easily able to hide. Um, something really cool about snakes is that, and I'll get Professor Plum a little <laughs> close, they do not have ears. So there are no ears here. Instead, they actually hear using vibrations. So if I were to put them on the table, he would be able to hear kind of like a hand hit the table and know exactly where it's at. Um, you might also see his tongue sticking out a whole bunch. So that is actually how they smell. So his tongue sticks out, um, kind of catches scent and brings it in. And actually, were he to open his mouth, I don't want him to right now though, but if he were to open his mouth, there would actually be two kind of holes on the inside of his mouth. And that is where his tongue takes all of those scents and sticks it in there. And it produces out and tells him like, if he's smelling me, he's like, that's a human hand. So he'd be able to tell me that. Um, Kind of a side fun fact is that cats also have those. So if you have a cat that goes up and smells something and they open their mouth, they're actually taking in that scent and learning from it. Um, snakes do have these tiny, tiny little nostrils and that is another way just to get more senses. Uh, so that, those are some of my fun facts. Uh, most snakes eat rats. Uh, some will eat small lizards, some will eat small insects, but generally they're more into the rodents. Um, and these guys actually get fed rodents. If you were to have a pet snake, they would want um, to get frozen rodents. You never want to just go out in the wild and get one. Um, you don't know where they've been or what those creatures have eaten. And so you want to make sure you feed your snake the healthiest, most exquisite meal you can. Um, a lot of people, do we have a question? We do have a couple questions. Yes, I, I love want to questions. interrupt you. So do the snakes like to come out at night or in the day? That's a great question. A lot of snakes, um, hunt better at night. So they're more likely to come out kind of around that dusk time versus in the daylight. That's when they would want to be hiding from predators or when they want to be like soaking up the sun, getting enough energy and warmth so that they could hunt. So great question. And then one more, how much do the snakes weigh? I'm not sure if we have an exact weight mm -hmm. on both of these mm -hmm. snakes. Um, if I wanted to look really strong, I would say 100 pounds. <laughs> but <laughs> really, I would say... <laughs> I'm trying to compare. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel maybe like one pound, mm -hmm. one, two pounds. Tangerine's definitely a little heavier. Um, just because she's much longer and older. Um, so like they do have bones and that's a big part of their density, but they're mainly just kind of one giant muscle. Um, someone had asked earlier uh, in the week about uh, poisonous snakes. 
And that is actually a kind of common myth. So there are differences between poisonous and venomous. And so for a snake to be poisonous, it would mean that you would have to eat them or if you were to go out and lick a snake, consume it in some way. Um, I recommend not doing either of those. Um, kudos if you're able to lick a snake, but please don't do that. <laughs> um, but so to get a poisonous snake, you would have to consume it versus venomous is through a bite. So they would inject venom through a bite. So we don't actually have poisonous snakes. We do have venomous snakes and there are four venomous snakes in Indiana. Three of them are endangered. And so that means that they are very rare. Their pop population is very, very low. Um, and those are, I have to double check, we have a pygmy rattlesnake, a water moccasin, um, a timber rattlesnake, and a copperhead. Um, and the water snake or water moccasin uh, is actually known to a lot of people as the cotton mouth. And the water moccasin can go in the water. That is something that they do, but they swim a little differently than normal snakes. So non-venomous snakes, they actually like to swim on top of the water um, versus non-venomous snakes will kind of swim in with their little heads up, um, kind of like a mini Loch Ness monster. Uh, the snake that you would see here would most likely be a copperhead and a copperhead is pretty dangerous. So if you were to get bitten by one, um, you would want to call 911 immediately and try to get to a hospital as soon as you can. Uh, you never want to, um, I want to say in there's some movies where like you'll see people sucking venom out of someone else that got bit. You don't ever want to do that. Um, you just want to get someone to medical help and attention right away. Uh, but most you do not have to worry about that. Professor Plum's really lively right now for you. <laughs> a good question that was just asked about yes. him. What would happen if you put him on the table? What would happen? Um, he would probably just kind of keep crawling. Um, yeah, he just kind of keeps going. I call this my like treadmill move. So he's just constantly, he can keep crawling and slithering, but he can't really go anywhere. <laughs> Um, something that's pretty cool that you could maybe see was that his tail was around my hand and that's actually a great um, identifier of snakes is that they're constrictors. A good portion of them are so they kill their prey by yeah kind of like grabbing onto them and squeezing them really tightly. Is his coloring double recessive? No black and no orange question mark? Oh that was fancy. <laughs> um, he would... He's kind of a more unique case um, because he was a captive bred snake. So I'm not sure exactly what type of genes he has, but they're not kind of the like natural ones. Yeah. yeah. We did have a question about what you should do if you see a snake in the wild. I believe you're going to cover that in a little bit. Yes. Is that correct? Perfect. So we'll get to that one shortly. Yeah. yeah so stay put. We'll get there. <laughs> Um, another trait of venomous snakes um, is that a lot of people are really nervous about snakes because of that potential that they are venomous. Um, but I have some little slides, little slides, pieces of paper to show you, um, to show the difference. And so one, this one kind of looks like you. <laughs> so we have here a non-venomous snake, just like Professor Plum. So you can see he has a very round pupil um, and we mentioned these tiny little nostrils that he has. So that's um, a really good indicator of a non-venomous snake versus a venomous snake. They have almost like a cat eye. So if you picture a really kind of sharp oval eye, they have that. And they also have this thing called a pit. Um, so that would be between a nostril and the eyeball. Um, and that just kind of allows them to better identify their prey. Um, another way to look, so if we kind of see, oh, you're doing a nice little S for me. Professor Plum's head is pretty much the same width as his body going all the way through versus on a venomous snake, a lot of them have this kind of like spade shaped head. 
So they have a pretty wide um, back area of their head. And then in general, their body is just pretty thick. Um, a lot of people get like a rat snake or a hognose snake confused because those two are pretty thick. Um, but in general, if you're nervous about it, um, you should always call someone who is trained to handle a snake. So if you were to find one in your garage um, and you kind of go through this checklist and you're like, eyes are round, but I'm not sure, they're pretty thick. Um, never deal with a snake on your own if you're not fully trained to do so. Um, people like Monroe County Humane Society are definitely trained to handle them and help you identify as well. Um, so you can always call and ask questions. Um, what else do we have? Do we have any questions? Um, yeah, we can probably bring Tangerine in for a little bit too. Yeah, if you we guys can do want that. Go ahead and switch out. Yeah. So I'm if gonna... anyone has any questions, you're welcome to go ahead and put them in the comments, and we'll have Autumn answer them here. We're gonna take a quick commercial break to switch out snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So Sandra, if you want to come in with Tangerine, we'll start getting yes. started on her. And then as Sandra mentioned before, she is 18 years old, so she yes. has been with us for a long time. She's our old girl, super handle friendly, very sweet, an excellent snake to get familiar with snakes and get a feel for touching them. Really gentle. Let's see, we do have another question. Autumn, you can kind of start to answer while you take sure. on tangerine. What happens if you get too close to a snake? That is a great question. Um, if you're too close to Tangerine, I don't think much will happen. She's been <laughs> very well dealt with. Um, she is, as you can see, she's a lot heavier and longer than Professor Plum. So I have to use a lot of hand space. Um, but if you were to get close to a snake, most likely they will retreat. Um, so I like to say anything with a mouth has the potential to bite. However, snakes will bite as a very last resort. Um, and kind of while we're talking about a bite, something really cool about snakes is that, if you can see here, Tangerine has this little tiny mouth. And I'm gonna ask a question to the, to the audience. How do you think, where's your head going? How do you think this tiny mouth eats rats? How do you think a rat would get in there? What do we think? Let's see in the comments. Does anyone have any idea about that? I'll let you think on it too. You can say it out loud at home. I'll still give you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, so are you ready for the answer? You ready to answer it? Your biggest secret is about to be revealed. Someone said it opens wide. It does open wide. Someone said it unhinges. Yes. Yes, that's perfect. Oh, we have some amazing snake experts. Is it the person who said double recessive? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was very good. Um, yeah, exactly. So both of those are correct. Tangerine, when she goes to eat a rattle or rattlesnake, <laughs> when she goes to eat a rat, um, she would actually, there is a space um, kind of in her jaw that is not connected and it unhinges, it opens wide and then her jaw actually can kind of like detach from the rest of her and her mouth can be like way down here and actually just swallow that rat whole. It's hmm. pretty crazy. So we do have another question. How many yes. babies can a snake have? Oh, that is a great question. It definitely varies by species. Um, I wanna, ooh, I'm not sure if I know like good answer for that. Um, definitely they can have at least one. <laughs> uh, but that's a great question. Does anyone else know in the comments? I feel like corn snakes would typically have one or two. We can learn from each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Does anyone else have any other questions for us? Yeah. If not, then I can easily move on to what happens if you're outside and you come across 
a snake. So the best thing, and someone had a really great question. Um, I can actually read it word for word. Where are you going? Um, what is the likelihood of encountering a snake during a hike in our parks? And if I were to encounter a snake, any tips to ensure safety for all parties, such as a snake, human, and a dog? Yes, that is a fantastic question. Um, so as I mentioned, snakes don't really want to hang out with you. Um, kind of like how a lot of people don't want to hang out with snakes. I guess we are the select few. But they will definitely retreat. They will hide. Um, there are snakes, kind of like the hognose snake. They will actually just kind of flip over and play dead, um, which is really crazy. And so they will do anything to kind of get away from you. Um, as I said, their last line of defense would be to bite. Um, and that's true for venomous snakes. So if you were to, I guess you're walking in the woods and you're just shoving your hand under logs, um, a snake may be really surprised, not know what to do and bite you. But for the most part, they're just trying to get to their next place, their next sunny rock, their next meal. Um, so they don't really wanna hang out with you too much. So if you're on a trail and you come across one, you can easily walk around it um, or turn around and go another way. If you are in, the parks in Bloomington, your dogs will definitely have to be on a leash. And it's also a really great idea to keep your pets on leashes when you're out hiking anyway for their safety and the safety of other animals and the trails around them. Um, so if your dog were to encounter a snake and they're on a leash, you could easily help guide them away from it. Um, so I think that is a really great and important question. If you find a snake in an unnatural area, um, like your garage. I have a really vivid memory of my mom finding a snake in our garage. Um, the best thing to do is definitely call someone who would be trained. Um, and that would be someone like animal control um, or even uh, if you have a really great pest control company, you can call them and they would be happily help you out. Um, so that's a super good question. Let's see. We do have another one. Why is a snake's body long? Why is it long? That is a fantastic question. Um, I feel like I could easily make up a story about it, but I would say with my best guess, um, I don't think we know an official answer, but I would say my best guess is that um, they just kind of keep growing. So snakes in the wild um, typically only live a couple of years versus snakes in captivity. So as pets or in tanks, um, aquariums, zoos, they can live for a really long time. And so they just kind of keep growing and keep getting longer and longer um, because they don't have to worry about predators. Uh, another guess of mine would be that um, they kind of, they can climb. So they actually have ribs that allows them to climb. And I feel like the longer they get, the easier it might be to climb. Um, that's solely a guess though. I don't think there's a, there's an official answer on why they're so long, but I so love that. So if someone was watching this and they became super interested in snakes and wanted to get one as a pet now, yes. what would be your recommendation for a good, you know, cage for them, a good enclosure? What, what should you do if you want to get a pet snake? Yeah, that is a great question. So snakes, um, I know it looks very easy right now. I've handled snakes for a while at this point. Um, but snakes can be a lot of work. So as I mentioned, for one, they're constantly growing. And that means that their tank also has to grow with them. So you would be continuously upgrading their tank to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, they have very specific temperatures that they need to be at. So you also have to get a really good light. Some people like UV lights as well um, so that they can remain at that temperature. You do have to worry about um, giving them annual checkups, just like you would a dog or a cat. Snakes have to go to the vet too to make sure everything's working well. Um, but I would say if you want to get a snake, um, maybe I'll pass it off to Sandra to give a really quick demonstration of this amazing um, really natural terrarium that they have for tangerine tangerine lives a very luxurious life perfect we'll go look at the um enclosure over here and then we'll come back for just a couple more questions yeah hi this is tangerine's home 
It's a uh, roughly 70 gallon tank that accommodates her long body so that her whole body can stretch out on one side of the tank. This is a bioactive setup that um, is very similar to how she would reside in nature. So there's some climbable areas here where she can get higher to the heat source. Uh, and we have thermometer and humidity gauges because the humidity has to be pretty high for these corn snakes as well. And then a pretty large um, area where they can kind of soak and drink and uh, kind of swim in it a little bit. And th the plants are alive too, so that it's as natural as possible for the snake. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we'll answer two more questions here that are below in the comments. Perfect. So what eats snakes in the wild? What eats snakes? That's a great question. Uh, oh, I'm trying to go in my sleeve. Um, a lot of your kind of main predators would eat snakes. Um, so large birds can eat snakes. Um, I think once in a while, like a coyote would if they're desperate. But I would say mainly birds and owls are the the big predators of snakes. Can snakes lose their tail like some lizards do when a predator grabs it? Oh, that's a fun question. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Um, I'm pretty pretty sure no. Um, lizards have a, that's kind of just kind of built into them where their tail actually grows in a different way than they do. You are stretching out. Um, versus snakes, snakes tails, it's all part of that one long muscle. Um, but that is a really good question. Uh, some snakes have rattles on their tails and that would be the only difference. So corn snakes do not, um, not all venomous snakes have rattles. Um, some have kind of just decoy rattles to make you think they're venomous. Um, they have a lot of really cool adaptations actually. Um, for example, some snakes can climb trees. Uh, some snakes can swim, which is crazy seeing as they don't have legs. Um, and some snakes can even still bite for example venomous snakes if you come across one that you think is dead um they can still be reactive after they have died um so you never want to play with a dead snake either but those are just kind of some of my favorite adaptations perfect we got one more question so we'll do that Yay! last question and then we'll be done how often do they shed their skin um that's a really good question most captive snakes uh, probably shed a couple times a year, um, just kind of on average. Though, of course, you can have snakes that are just growing like crazy and want to shed every single month. But How definitely. often does tangerine typically shed? Every two months. Every two months. Mm -hmm. every Look two at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know a ton about tangerine. Unfortunately, she's not my snake, but I, I'd love to take her home one day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is a great question. So tangerine sheds every few months. Um, and you can tell when they're going to shed because they get a little itchy. They'll start scratching themselves against things. Sometimes they won't eat um, for weeks leading up to it. And then their eyes will actually get super, super milky. So it'll look like um, they almost have like gray contacts on. Perfect. All right. We got one more question. This is finally going to be the last one. What other colors can snakes be? They can be a ton of different colors. Um, so there are a few resources I really like. There's this book from Purdue University called Snakes of Indiana. Um, and that shows you a ton of pretty cool different colored snakes. Like, look at that guy. Um, but most snakes you see in the wild are going to be those kind of natural looking colors. So like you would see a corn snake that would be orange, red, brown, and black, kind of all in one. A lot of snakes are dark colors to match their surroundings. Um, some snakes, like a garter snake, has bright yellow stripes down their back. Um, and that's just to be like, hey, you don't wanna eat me, I have yellow. Yellow means I'm gross. Um, so they can be a variety of colors. Uh, another resource I really like um, is Peterson's Field Guide to Reptiles. Um, and so that'll tell you a lot of different snakes you can find in Indiana and on the, like our side of the US. Perfect. Yeah, great question. 
I think that's all that we have for today. So we'll just say bye to Tangerine and everyone can thank Autumn for in the comments. Yes, thank She's you. from Monroe County Parks and Recreation. Like we said, she is the naturalist there. Yes, her and if you food. are, and I'll give a shout out to Monroe County Humane Association. Uh, if you're looking for a very romantic Valentine's Day, <laughs> you can actually rent a snake visit. So you could have Tangerine come and visit you for... I think like an hour or 30 minutes? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I was wrong. <laughs> Double book her. You could get her for so long. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you.